Good evening. Welcome to the Lewiston City Council regular meeting of Monday, September 8th, 2014. I'll call this meeting to order. Uh, first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me. Gentlemen, remove your caps, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Uh, next up on the agenda is uh, citizens' comments. This is an opportunity for citizens to address the council on agenda items or other items they wish to bring to the attention of the council. Citizens are encouraged to discuss operational issues in advance with the city manager. In consideration of others wishing to speak, please limit your remarks to three minutes. And this evening we have kind of a full house and I suspect we're gonna have a lot of comments, so please, we wanna hear what you have to say, but please come down, be concise, brief, polite, and who wants to go first? Name and address for the record, please. Okay. Name is Chris Cosby. I live here in Lewiston, uh, 3032 Cypress Street. And I'm coming before you again on this uh, ordinance uh, 4614 that um, uh, is basically a, um, a statue approving a certain sexual behavior. But in the comments, uh, it says, whereas, says um, uh, this is not to be construed to support or advocate any particular doctrine, position, point of view, or religious view to the contrary, but that is not true. When you make a decision on a particular sexual lifestyle, you have now adopted a doctrine. You have adopted a position, a point of view, and certainly you have crossed the bounds of religious liberty here. Uh, and as to be remembered in 38.1b, it is uh, deemed an exercise of the police power of the city of Lewiston. So the police power will enforce this. Uh, if you fail to comply, as we know, if you read the document, it's a $1,000 fine, six months in jail. If you don't want your property to be used for a um, sexual event of some kind. So what we see here is stripping your property rights. What right do you have? You don't have any rights anymore. You get to pay the taxes, but we'll tell you what to do with it, and if you don't like it, you're going to jail. So there. And that's what the city council is proposing for us here, and I need people to stand up and say, no city council, we don't want this. We want the right to choose. It's already federal, you can't discriminate on sex, race, religion, um, and a host of other things, disabilities. But sexual deviancy? Why don't I have the right to say no, I don't want that on my property? You know, why don't I have the right to say, I don't want to bake the cake for that because I don't believe in that view? So my religious view now says that is an abomination, but too bad, you know, it's to jail for you, old Chris. Is this what we want in our community? Our liberties taken for just a, a small minority? Is this what we want, folks? Please contact your councilman, your mayor, uh, all but two here support this. And you need to stand up and say, no, we don't want this. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Don't be bashful. There's a big wall, people are gonna line up. Uh, my full name is Thomas Schumacher. I live at 1632 8th Avenue here in Lewiston. I've spoken before, but I've come here again to voice support for the uh, human rights ordinance. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello, I'm Sylvia Evers, the executive director of the YWCA, 300 Main Street, here in Lewiston. At the YWCA, we see families that often cannot access services because they are a single parent family or they are a family where the couple is not married. 
We see domestic violence victims that are threatened by their partners or their family to be out in their workplace or their significant community of importance. Why are we more concerned about businesses that may want to be authorized to discriminate than we are for our friends, our families, and our neighbors? Are we all going to have to complete a checklist about our preferences, our likes or dislikes before we patronize a business? Lewiston needs to strive to be a kinder, gentler, more inclusive community, not the reverse. The state of Idaho is one of 28 states that has not enacted the safeguards included in this ordinance. I would like to encourage Lewiston to join the group of enlightened Idaho cities. Please vote for ordinance 4615. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Liz Chavez, 1521 15th Avenue. I can't even believe that we're really having this conversation, but I think it's good that we are. And I am here to support this ordinance, 4614, most wholeheartedly, and I would urge you to do it as well. Thank you. Thank you. If you're willing to testify, please come down and maybe queue up. Uh, John Michael, 1448 8th Street, uh, Lewis and Idaho. Uh, this is an issue that uh, I, I don't, it's not clear cut in my mind uh, where I stand on it. Um, I've lived on the streets and I know, uh, and I have friends that are uh, gay, lesbian, transgender youth, and they've been, uh, you know, kicked out of their homes uh, for what they believe, okay? And uh, they end up on the streets where I was. And uh, it breaks my heart. You know, they get into prostitution, they get into drugs, and it's not a happy place, okay? But this issue, I don't think, necessarily is about uh, uh, gay rights. I think it also has to do with uh, what is the government's purview. Um, the Constitution, I was a Catholic, I quit the church. They seem to want to tell me what my sins are. Um, my sins, in my mind, are between God and I. Uh, the church has too many rules, and the rules state uh, that if gay marriage is a sin and that quote-unquote acts of homosexuality are a sin. Well, I don't believe that. But is it our Constitution says that uh, the state cannot go into the Catholic Church and say, look, your rules are wrong. Okay, you've got to change them. That's not the purview of the state. And if you're a private business owner, and this is, I mean, like I said, this is a hard issue for me. I have a lot of gay friends. Um, but is it up to the state to decide who I can serve and who I can't if I have a private business, right? I mean, if I was running a hotel and a member of the Ku Klux Klan uh, wanted to buy a room, I would want the right to say no. I'm not gonna serve you. Or if I, Bob, if you were investing some money and a guy came in with a shirt that says, I hate fags, you know, and he wants you to invest his money, you want the right to say no, right? Well, a lot of folks have deeply, and I think they're misguided, but they have deeply felt religious beliefs around this. Um, and uh, for the state to say that that is okay or that is not okay, I don't think it's the state's business. I think it's our, job as a society to speak peacefully and kindly to each other and talk about these issues in a sane way where we're not using words that uh, provoke. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna find out and I wanna hear the legal issues of why this Jesse and the folks that are for this legally why you think it's okay for the government to do that. I mean I really do and if you can convince me I'm happy to change my mind on this but at this point that's where I stand. I don't know. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. My name is Terry Rust. I live at 1645 Ridgeview Drive in Clarkston, but I work in Lewiston, and I am a member of a church in Lewiston. And as a Christian, I'm called to love my neighbor, not choose who I love and who I don't. All individuals are deserving of love and respect, 
and the same opportunities for a place to work, a place to live, and public accommodations as set out in this ordinance. Hate and discrimination are not Christian values. We started off with the Pledge of Allegiance, which ended with liberty and justice for all, not for just those we like. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. I'm Bill Hall. I live at 1012 Prospect Avenue. And yes, I did walk over here tonight. <laughs> it's good exercise. Uh, I will speak for three minutes and 20 seconds. That's my gift to all of you. Go. <laughs> there are days when I wonder if Mother Nature made an error in constructing us. We have been born in great diversity. We are born in different sizes, shapes, and inclinations. No two humans are exactly the same, not even twins. Just look at this audience tonight. There's a lot of hair showing. And that's, <laughs> excuse me, hair showing. I got some hair in my, my throat, not in my head. And you folks look great in all that hair. Uh, but how do you and Mother Nature think that makes me feel? I was born bald, and, and then a few years later, uh, just as I started to get good at growing hair, Mother Nature flipped off the hair switch and it's back to bald again. I see that uh, several of you in the audience have uh, known the same heartache. Uh, 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 this gentleman who spoke first, for instance. Uh, you were born that way. But we are far from alone when it uh, comes to the natural variety of human beings. In fact, there isn't a person in this room who is 100% exactly like any other person in this room. So beware. If we are to continue to sort people out and keep judging each other, that's a two-way street. Some of us are born tall or small or dark or pasty white. Uh, some of us have large ears, especially old men. In fact, uh, old men with big ears are scattered all over this audience tonight, and I'm part of that. Uh, some of us were uh, uh, born gifted at football, field hockey, or fishing. Some of us were born with an urge to become Democrats or Republicans. And yes, uh, that's embarrassing, but they can't help what it is. They were born that way. Some of us were born grumpy. Some of us were born kind. And of course, some among us were born gay or transgender. Similarly, many straight men were born mucho macho. Many women were born so feminine they hum when they walk. And a sizable sample of humans are somewhere in between. But we were all pretty much born that way. Now, as time and reality run their course, this city finally does appear to be ready to stop preventing all God's children from getting a job or a place to live. Those days are over, so I salute this council. Of course, we still exclude bald people like me from work, but only when it's a job uh, as news anchor on a television station. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hall. You still have 40 seconds. <laughs> how I ended up following Bill Hall. My name's Amy Canfield. I live at 917 7th Avenue. I would urge you to pass this. It's not protecting special rights, as some people believe. It's extending the basic rights to everyone. The state and the federal government have already done this in a lot of ways, and it's morally the right thing to do, legally the right thing to do, and I would urge you to just protect everyone the same way. Thank you. Thank you. Amy Bond, 3634, 18th Street E in Lewiston, and I'm here tonight in support of this bill. I do not think anyone has the right to discriminate against anyone based on religious beliefs or any other beliefs. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Hi, my name is Paul Stewart. I live in Clarkson at 2875 Grandview Drive. I'm a native Lewistonian, proud of it. And I'm proud of the uh, city council for addressing this issue. It's one that people are not comfortable with. Uh, 
but it's one that needs to be aired and discussed. And uh, tonight's a wonderful night for doing that. Uh, as the lady previously said, we, we did a Pledge of Allegiance with uh, life, liberty, and pursuit of justice, and we talked about justice for all. Our neighbors are diversified. Um, some happen to be of gay orientation. Um, they were born that way. There will be people that want to uh, debate that, but in my mind, it's not too debatable. And it's also, I'm kind of a problem solver. I try to look on both sides of problems and issues and sort through them, and, and uh, just like the, the city council people do here tonight. But on this issue, I don't think there are two sides. There's a right side. And the right side is we need to, need to make sure that the rights uh, in the workplace and elsewhere are, are made available to all of our neighbors uh, despite their sexual orientation, what color their eyes all are, or in Mr. Hall's case, whether they have hair or not. So I, I really urge everyone here, 81% um, of the people in Idaho uh, said that it was not proper, it was not right to discriminate in the workplace because of sexual orientation. I'm sure that as a percentage, the people in Lowston follow that quite closely, and I urge the council to, uh, to vote their hearts of the constituency and to vote uh, this issue in, this ordinance. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Uh, my name is Craig Emerson. I live at 222 North Prospect Boulevard in Lewiston. And to preface my comments, I strongly oppose this ordinance. Um, in background, though, I do agree with Mr. Hall. We're all born the same. We are all born in sin, and the only answer to that sin is Jesus Christ. That aside, I, that's why I don't propose or I don't support discrimination, because we all have the same downfalls in different areas. This legislation is dangerous, though. It is going down a slippery slope to criminalize this particular issue. We said a Pledge of Allegiance and everybody talked about justice and things like that. It also says one nation under God. You criminalize this issue is the next step going to the churches and arresting a pastor who preaches straight out of the Bible. And just for uh, context, a lot of the founding fathers of this country believed in that Bible and that's one of the reasons we have such an incredible country is because of the underlying concepts and principles of those founding fathers. And so the government is now going to step in and criminalize something that is in the Bible as a sin. I mean, there's a lot of other sins. Again, I don't support discrimination, but this is a slippery slope that we're talking about going down. And I hope we aren't starting to arrest pastors in our church as the next step. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. My name is Clifford Lewis. I live at 148 Shallow Drive. And I do not approve of this ordinance. And I think what it is, is the government, all they have in the government anymore is these special interest groups. They're trying to protect them and not the people. I'm totally against it. I think it's wrong. We need to have get back to the Christian and believe in what God had to say about it. We don't stand up for it. Our country will lose it. Thank you, sir. My name is Muriel Nystrom. I live at 2024 Powers Avenue here in Lewiston. And I would like to remind us that um, a number of years ago, I heard the same comments about allotting or getting rid of discrimination against blacks. It would be wonderful if as Christian people, we remembered first of all that Christ said we are to love each other 
as we love ourselves. If I would not like to have my choices taken away from me, I do not want other people's choices taken away from them. Regardless of their sexual orientation, they are, believe it or not, God's children. And I believe that we need to respect that completely. It didn't hurt me when blacks began to eat in the same restaurant where I eat. And it will not hurt me to have relatives or friends who choose for whatever reason to be or who are born to be a different sexuality persuasion. It's not gonna hurt me and it's not gonna hurt you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. My name is Anita Rognes. I live at 2338 14th Street in Lewiston. And of course, we're all aware of the separation of church and state. But just for the record, since it's been brought up, I want to say there are many of us who consider ourselves Christian who believe that God does not discriminate. He loves all of his children. He wants them all to have the same rights. Thank you, ma'am. My name is Donald G. Adams. I live at 1632 8th Avenue Boulevard. I am in support of this, as well as the lady said before. This is a community of love, compassion, tolerance, and acceptance. This community has supported me personally through a very medical extensive service. They also know that I am gay. This is a community of love, compassion. We do not discriminate as far as I'm concerned because it's wrong of, on any basis, no matter if you're a Muslim, a Catholic, a Mormon, gay, lesbian, transgender, black or white, native or otherwise. It's wrong. God did not make mistakes. I'm here to prove it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hi, I'm Wilson Boots. I live at 2309 Sunset. Um, you know what? I'm not even going to tell you what I think. Um, I do think this should go to the voters. I think what happens is we have an issue. We have a bunch of people come in here, some people that don't even live in this town, which I don't think is right. I don't think people from outside of this community. This is a city council meeting. This isn't a state. This isn't a national. This is Lewiston. That's my opinion. Um, I'd like to see you go to the voters. And a reminder for you guys on the council, the last election, there was four other candidates uh, that were the incumbents. I guess there was three, but they were going down the same road you guys went down. Not one of them are sitting in your chairs. So you might want to keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Karen Lewis, 148 Shiloh Drive. I'm against this. I just don't want something on paper that tells me I need to think a certain way. And I also think it should go to the voters. Thank you, ma'am. Mike Lorenz, 458 Crestline Circle Drive. Well, since it'd be a pretty tough act to follow somebody like Bill Hall, I guess I'm gonna bring up my favorite subject, the cell phones. So anyway, you know, like Bill, I'm kind of a little thin on top, but you know, hopefully I'm not discriminated against. But anyway, I guess the cell phone thing seems like it's kind of drug on for quite a while. And I guess it doesn't seem like city staff has really gone through and seeing how many people actually 
you know, require these phones, actually need these phones. We got about 139 people or entities on this program, and I checked on the cost of this thing on uh, January, first part of January, and we were paying about $54,498 a year. And around August 14th, when I checked on it again, it had jumped up to $60,000 a year. And I'm thinking, you know, why am I furnishing cell phones for how many people? I mean, Public Works has 39 employees that need cell phones. Administration service only has four. The fire department has 25. Parks and Rec has 21. I can't imagine how many guys out mowing grass need cell phones, for crying out loud. And I think before you go screwing around and awarding a contract, I really think you need to sit back and make staff go through and say, who actually needs these phones? I mean, you know, $60,000 seems like kind of chump change, but it is taxpayers' money, and I really don't think city staff has done much of a job as far as, you know, really going over this thing. It's just like, here, uh, what's $60,000? Kind of like this car allowance thing that you can take away at any time. It doesn't have to be when the budget session's going on. You know, I mean, they, they are at will employees, and I don't think they're going to quit their day job if you take their, you know, phone, you know, their car mileage away. But anyway, as far as this cell phone thing, I think you really need to sit back and uh, really go through this thing and find out who really needs these and come back and say, we're going to pay you a stipend of $30 a month, and that's going to be the end of it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Um, Do we vote in secret? Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, okay, we're back. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your testimony. Um, we'll go ahead and move on to the consent agenda. These are routine items of business. Um, anybody want to pull anything off the consent agenda? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to read the consent agenda. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Minutes of the August 18th, 2014 regular City Council meeting. Accepting the minutes of the August 19th, 2014 Emergency Medical Services Advisory Board and the July 17th Historic Preservation Commission. Approving Resolution 2014 52 by title only. A resolution approving a quick claim deed from the City of Lewiston and Idaho Municipal Corporation to Nathan Barnett and providing an effective date. Approving the Airport East Subdivision Final Plat with Conditions. Approving the first reading of Ordinance 4615 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston amending Lewiston City Code Section 35-32-4, increasing the speed limit on a section of Old Spiral Highway from 25 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour and providing an effective date. And approving the vouchers payable dated August 15th, 2014 through August 28th, 2014 in the amount of one million twenty six thousand six hundred and thirty seven dollars and fifteen cents. Okay, counselors, the consent agenda has been read. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Mr. Mayor. Council Randall. <clears throat> Just a question our city manager do you know if the uh, airport manager sent us copies to the zoning people and stuff about the recent FAA ruling for zoning no I do not know that I know that we have um, communicated that to the community development staff uh, and asked them to be in contact with the airport to get those uh, new regulations so that when we uh, have applications for uh, development that might fall within the airport area, we know what those are and can apply those. But I cannot tell you for certain that that exchange has happened, but I'll find out for you. Okay, thank you. And you're referring to the uh, yeah. airport east subdivision. Okay. 
Okay, consent agenda has been read. Entertain a motion, or we already have the motion. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Under the active agenda, first item up cell phone services and equipment. This is a potential approving the purchase of cell phone services and equipment from Verizon Wireless by means of the Idaho State contract. Mr. Bennett, you want to introduce this? Thank you, Mayor and members of the council. Um, this is an issue that the city has been looking at for a number of months now, uh, looking at uh, how we will provide um, modern cell phone services and equipment. Um, and of course, this is an ever-changing, improving technology uh, to provide the services that the city needs to operate uh, its day-to-day -day functions throughout the different departments of the city. Um, we've reviewed this um, from you know, the staff perspective of what kind of services uh, and quality of services we need, what kind of equipment, what kind of cell phones are, are needed in order to accomplish this. Uh, we've discussed this on two or three different occasions with the city council at work sessions to look into this issue. Uh, at our last work session on August 4th, uh, the staff received direction from the council to um, prepare an item that is currently before you tonight on this agenda uh, to consider approving a contract um, under the state uh, contract uh, for cell phone services and equipment with Verizon Wireless. And so that is uh, before you tonight. And uh, we have other members of the staff here. Uh, if you have any specific questions you'd like to ask regarding either the contract or the equipment or services themselves. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, I guess to start it off, I'd entertain a motion to approve the cell phone services and equipment contract with Verizon Wireless using the Idaho State contract. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion. Councilor Blakey. When we brought this up for discussion um, several work, several meetings ago, we talked about doing it for uh, possibly one year, and then coming back at the end of the year and reviewing this, and reviewing it, the cycle, giving competitors, local competitors, and all other competitors an opportunity to, to bid on this. I want to make sure I understand that I'm looking at the letter from Verizon uh, sent to us, and, and it indicates in there the current term of this. Uh, it says, thank you very much for your response to the proposal. And they use the dates. Obviously, this, this doesn't apply to us, April 12th through October 13th of 2016. None of those dates apply to us, correct? We still would be talking about a one-year contract that we'd be engaging in. I won't defer to the city attorney on a specific reading of that, but uh, what my understanding of this means is that this is the ter term during which the contract would be in, could be in effect with Verizon Wireless. They're willing to commit for that period of time to the terms of the contract. However, there are provisions within the contract that allow the city to opt out at any time. But I'll, again, I'll defer to the city attorney. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, contracts are valid uh, year to year for city council, uh, absent of finding of ordinary necessary expense under the Constitution. And so um, just by constitutional law, you can only bind yourself for a year, from year to year, because of the budgetary process. So um, as I understand it, and I was not involved in the negotiation of this contract, but um, the purpose of it is to extend those provisions for the three-year term if the city council wishes to continue to do that. But at the end of a year, you can opt out of the, the uh, contract, as I understand it. But I did not negotiate this contract, so. Uh, if I may, um, we were told that we could opt out of this at any time with no penalty to the city. Is that still correct? Under the terms of the contract, there are no penalties to the city for terminating the contract. Um, it simply states what services Verizon is willing to provide to the city during that period of time that they're, you know, they propose. So that would go through October 31st of 2016. If the city council decides to extend the contract through that whole time period, then these conditions would be honored by Verizon. Okay. However, there is no penalty to the city 
uh, if we decide that we wish to terminate the contract at, at the end of a year, say, for example, as well, we discussed at the work session? The reason I'm asking the question is because uh, there was talk about uh, one of the local providers amping up their service to meet what Verizon is proposing, and should they do that within, say, six months, and it looks like they might be able to provide the same services identically, then we could, at that time, throw it out to bid? Well, I think at that time, if uh, uh, that happens and the city is prepared to, you know, review that information and the council decides to move forward uh, with uh, creating a uh, open bid process, uh, the council certainly has the ability to do that. Okay. Councilor Blakey. I guess I'm still not clear. Are, are we going to put this in, make sure this is in, somewhere and this is in writing. I understand there's kind of like, we got two contracts going here. Mm -hmm. We've got an offer from Verizon to honor the state rates through 2016. Correct. Which is a good deal if we, if we like it or not. Right. But I want to make sure that we have that, you know, we're all still sitting here one year from now because none of us are going to get ran out of town just yet. Um, and so we're, we're all still sitting here one year from now. We want to make sure that what we said a year a year ago we remember. And so I guess I'm, I want to make sure that we know we actually nailed this down. And say one year from now we're going to bring this back to the table for discussion and put it somewhere in writing that we're saying that and we're not saying well I think that's what we said or I think we said this. Well, I think you can make that. It's in the terms of the contract. Yeah, I think you can make that a part of your motion as well. Under obviously. number three contract term. Yeah. That either party uh, is it, valid through October 31st, 2016, unless sooner, sooner terminated by either party. Okay. So we, we can do that, but uh, your point's well taken, Counselor. If you want to make it crystal clear, you can, you can enshrine that in the motion to say that the council will come back in a year to review this and consider um, bidding the process formally to other uh, and all other uh, providers. Councilor Daniel. If we were to cancel the contract, uh, what would happen to the phones that we purchased in this contract? Um, that's a good question. I I don't know. The phones, most of the phones were going to be given to us for free. Um, the phones that we purchase, typically when you sign on with a new company, what Verizon is offering to do is to buy back the old contract, buy us out of it, take our phones in on trade. That's typically what happens. So yeah, I guess it would depend on, on who you know, is winning the bid and what their policies are. And if they want to be competitive, I'm sure they'll I'll make it easy. Councilor Daniel. I think uh, Inland Cellular provides a quality local service. I think they're an important part of the community. Um, I haven't been swayed on the merits of needing the Verizon contract over Inland's. Um, I understand IT wants the most updated technology, uh, but we don't always need the best of the best at the at at the highest cost. Currently, right now, we're paying less with Inland. I, I'm fine with the current contract. I prefer keeping it. Okay. Council Mel Meldonado. Um, I think when we have department heads and employees coming to us saying that their phones are not working, uh, they're losing text messages, calls, voicemails, what have you, um, I think that is grounds for looking at something different. And I think that's why we have this contract in front of us today. Councilor Blakey. Mr. Lorenz has been up in front of this podium several times um, hammering a point. Um, and um, yeah, I, he's got a point there, I think, that we probably probably should be taking a look at the, the usage of our phones. And, and in some cases, it's possible that maybe IT does take a look and say, some of these phones are not being used as often as, as they are. Maybe some are not being used at all. And maybe is it possible that there could be 
I'm not asking you to answer that question right now, but if we go through with this process, I guess I would like to spend some more attention on that issue and say, can we reduce the number of phones? Um, I also understand in today's era, we want, if there's a, we want instant access. No longer do we get everybody together in the morning to have a or uh, get together over coffee for a half hour and send everybody out on their jobs and say, okay, let's all gather at noon and we'll review the afternoon work schedule. Now today you're sent a text and you're told where to go and what to do. And, and that's, I, I also understand that that's convenience too, but it is possible. I will, I will honor Mr. Lorenz's request there that I think it's possible that we may have a, some more, too many phones. And I'd like to at least, where we go with this, that we take a look at that issue and uh, take an honest take an honest look at that. Okay. Well, I guess uh, I'm a little on the fence, but uh, having one provider instead of having three providers to me makes a lot of sense, which is currently where we're at right now. Uh, the number of phones that are in use and the number of phones that we'd be provided with, um, they're not all smartphones. They're I mean, there, there are a certain amount of the smartphones, if you will. I like the idea of being able to have the control over what's being used, how many minutes, how much data is being used, and that's what we get with the Verizon plan. Um, from a cost standpoint, yes, the cost has gone up, and it did shock me a little bit, but that also included uh, integrating tablets for several of the rigs. Uh, personal protection, well, the fire department, police, as their laptops go out of service, replacing them with tablets that are tied into the system. So there's a little bit of the cost there. Um, Hardware is not cheap, but, you know, a year, I don't know if we, we need to put it up for a year. I think uh, with the technology changing as it is, and we've heard from Mr. Motto in the past that, uh, and I believe their company's investing in their infrastructure, but at this time, I don't think they have it quite up to where Verizon's at right now. I'd be more comfortable with, uh, and I'm not saying we're just gonna do a six month, but, you know, if it's a one year and we can opt out at six months, somebody comes to us with a better mouse trap in six months, well, let's face it, my phone that I left in my rig is, got it a year ago, July, and it was a iPhone 3. I think it was obsolete when I got it. You know, it still works. So, you know, that's a, it, it, it's a fluid environment. And, uh, but I like the idea that, we, you know, Mr. Lenz has made comments about uh, personal usage and stuff like that. And I think uh, having it under one umbrella, there's a level of control that comes with that. You know, I mean, that's a fact. We now will have a level of control over what's being used, how often it's being used, things like that. For the fire department, the police department, those typically those items stay with the car. They don't belong to the employee. They stay with the vehicle, so that it's for use on whoever's on duty at that time. So, um, I mean, I, I'm we've been beating this since February. February. I think it's time to make a decision and move on. And again, given the nature of the business and how fast things change, we can change it. You know, that is our power. So that's where I'm at. Council Randall. Uh, I agree that we need to get it under one unit, one company. Uh, three companies is a little hard to have control over or accountability over a system. Uh, one of the other things that we could stipulate with Verizon is that we can ask them to give us a uh, monthly report on phone usage by number so that we can tell which ones are being used and which ones aren't or have very low usage. So we, at the end of that year, we can make a decision on how many phones we really want. And then we can also decide on whether we want to continue with Verizon or put it up for bid. Okay. Councilor Blakey. One last question here for me. Mr. Marsh. Dan, I think there you are. Budget-wise, when we set our budget here and voted on our budget last week, uh, did we accommodate an increase in the cell phone usage in our budget? 
the cost of the increase it's when in, under administrative line items. Mr. Mayor? Yes. It's certainly, it's not exact to science, but there were some increases for both rate increases and, and some increases for hardware as well. Okay. Pro Tem, did you have something to add? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll just say that <clears throat> I think the, the price is too much and talking about a level of control, I think we would have more control if we went with a stipend approach because then we know exactly how much money and we have more visibility on where the money's going. So I'm, I'm going to vote against this. Okay. Councilor Collins. Uh, in, in looking at this, there's a couple things that I, I honestly don't like. I like the idea of having one company with one umbrella looking at everything. Uh, Mr. Randall mentioned being able to track numbers. H have we tracked the numbers? I, I would assume that the companies we have now can track and tell us exactly how much usage we are or are not using on individual phones. Did we collect that data? The data I've seen, because uh, I don't take care of these bills, these companies with joy showed how many minutes we're currently using with Amazon and the full minutes. We have a pool of well over 35,000 full minutes, and we're using about 13,000 in August, 13,500 roughly full minutes. So, you know, you can, you can pull reports, I'm sure, and then show exactly what phone um, used, but I have not seen that data. Is, is there a reason why we did not? I mean, we're asking for a lot more phones. I guess my question is why, why didn't we ask for that information if we're trying to justify more phones? In the first uh, place, I, I don't think the number. Well, I mean, if we've heard me, I, but we're not increasing the number of phones. We're we're increasing some devices, but the number of phones is pretty static. Is that correct? Total phones that we have? No, I think the number of phones is going to increase increase slightly here with with Verizon contract. Okay, and, and we covered those details um, in the presentations we've done in the past, and the reason why the number of phones would increase. Some of the smartphones uh, with LTE, the usability out in the field, and so on. And it's not my decision to say who gets what phone. That's not my place here at all. Uh, that's that's up department to the department heads. heads. So. Mr. Mayor. Council Randall. Call the question. Okay. Council Randall's called for the question. We have a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Show of hands. Aye. Nay. Okay. Okay, so the question's been called. Uh, all those in favor of uh, the Cell phone contract with Verizon Wireless for a term of one year, possibly shorter. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay. Motion carries four to three. Thank you. Okay. Next up is a potential first reading of Ordinance 4614. This is enacting a new section to the city code to be codified as Chapter 38, Sections 1 through 7, prohibiting discrimination in housing, employment, and public accommodations based upon familial status, sexual orientation, and or gender identity slash expression. I'll entertain a motion to read Ordinance 4614 for the first time. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? This is to read. Okay, Councilor Daniel. Right. Yeah. So, as a elected government official, we're being asked to vote on an ordinance which could send somebody to prison for six months and a thousand dollar fine. So, I would like to know before I vote on this, where are the actual current problem? What, I, I've asked this repeatedly, what businesses in the city of Lewiston are actively engaging in discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. What businesses are creating this problem, so much of a problem that we're here today voting on this ordinance, or is it just a political statement? Anybody? That I couldn't tell you, sir. Councilor Randall. 
I would like to know, in light of that question, I would like to know why the Chamber of Commerce isn't down here screaming bloody murder. If they have a problem with this ordinance, they should be here. And I haven't heard one word from the Chamber of Commerce. Okay. Councilor Daniel. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? My point is we're, we're voting on something that's supposed to solve a problem, but yet nobody who's actually advocating for this is actually listing the current businesses that are supposedly discriminating. Now, I have principled arguments against the ordinance itself, but I'm just curious, as a matter of doing business, if we're fixing a problem, list the problem, list the businesses. I, I, I personally would like to know so I, so I don't shop there. I'd like to help boycott those businesses that actually are discriminating if they actually are but nobody can list them. We've had several months on this. I've requested this probably each time we've discussed this, what businesses are actually discriminating. I'm, I'm really curious. Okay. Any other comments? Mr. Mayor. Pro Tem. I agree, and I think no one should have the authority to exploit citizens' property to promote their own agenda, which is exactly what this ordinance does. This ordinance tramples on our basic civil liberties to freely associate with one another, to engage in business transactions without being forced in involuntary servitude, and a contract with one another without the heavy hand of governmental coercion. Such an egregious disregard for our property rights, our freedom of association, and our abilities to freely contract is why I'll be voting against this ordinance. Okay. Councilor Daniel. You know, in a free society, it is not the government's role to interfere in the voluntary interactions of, of citizens except to enforce contracts, prevent fraud, and stop violence. That's about it. There's much better ways to go about stopping discrimination based on, on sexual orientation, boycotts. One of these speakers actually got up earlier and spoke in favor of, the, of this ordinance. He said that Lewiston is a, um, uh, a compassion, it has shown love and compassion and acceptance. And I agree, and I think that's, that's not because we have an ordinance in place that bans us, it's despite that. I think we, we, just, we actually have a real healthy, welcoming community, and we don't need another law just for the sake of making a political statement and padding somebody's political resume. Okay. Okay, well. No. <laughs> I'm not going to keep quiet, I promise. Um, is Council Milonado. Uh Just to clarify, first of all, with the fine that Mr. Cosby is so fond of, um, you are ticketed. It is a misdemeanor, which is the same fine as ripping a library book or littering in a city park. So that's the same level as discrimination, just to kind of set that ground level. Um, also in this ordinance, if you do read it, there is uh, the opportunity for mediation, but you don't even have to go to court. There is no fine or no jail time handed down. Um, even though, even if you were to skip mediation, which the cost of that is all bared by the two parties that are involved with the act of discrimination, it is not bared by the taxpayers. Um, even if you were to go forward into court, there is still a provision that you could be charged with a lesser fine of an infraction of $150. And the cities, the eight other cities where the sun still sets and rises, I promise you that, that have passed this ordinance, um, none of them have gone all the way to jail time or the $1,000 fine as uh, stated in state code for a misdemeanor. Okay. That's my two cents on that fine part at least. Thank you. Councilor Blakey. I think it's important to remember, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again, you know, we are a republic. And all of us elected officials here, and all elected officials, their job is to represent everybody, not one cause, not a group of individuals, and not to exclude an individual. Uh, frequently I hear the argument saying, well, it only represents two or three percent of the population. That's not the job of government. The job of government, my job is to represent everybody. I don't get to pick and choose what percentage I don't want to represent. That's not what I was elected to do here. I was elected to try to represent everybody fairly and to treat everybody fairly. That's my job. And I will vote yes for this. Okay. Councilor Daniel. I, I just have to ask a sarcastic question. 
Um, is Marty Trillhouse okay with this ordinance? I just want to make sure that those supporting this don't wind up on his jeers <laughs> list, because that'd be a real shame. I just want to make sure that the person who made this possible has had his input. Okay. I couldn't answer that. Thank you. You know, you know what's embarrassing? Is I don't even know what Marty Trillhouse looks like. <laughs> He's not in the crowd. Okay. Um, okay, all those in favor of... Or actually, we, I, we had a motion. Yes. Can I just Council comment on one more thing? It was, it was brought up this evening about putting this to a vote. Um, you have the right to exercise your vote when you vote for your city councilors, and that's why we are here. Um, I mean, should we put the cell phone contract to vote as well? I mean, that's actually your taxpayer money. This is not involving your taxpayer money. Um, so I think that you should be more inclined to want to get that out to be voted on by the citizens rather than an ordinance that's going to extend basic human rights to your neighbors, your brothers, your sisters, your mom, your dad, your uncle, your cousin, human rights, nothing special, just equal. That's all, that's all this ordinance is doing. Okay. Um, okay, Councilor Daniel. Well, sending someone to prison for six months, I think there is a, a uh, cost to the taxpayer. If they go, because it's in here, they could go to six months. You may say that they won't, but they could. It, it's, it's written in here for a reason. And when you say rights, I don't, think, I don't think it means what you think it means. When you, you don't have an inherent right to somebody else's property. You, do you own your energy? Do you, if, do you think it's okay for government to force you into involuntary servitude to, even if it's something as trivial as mowing somebody else's lawn because you don't own a lawn care service? Once again, I think discrimination is wrong. I think there's better ways to go about solving it but you don't have an inherent right to somebody else's property. One of the things, you know, he, Councilor Maldonado brought up the human rights thing. People have a human right to eat, a human right to shelter. Well, that doesn't mean they have a human right to, some, to your fridge. It also doesn't mean they have a human right to your home. Should we pass an ordinance that bans discrimination based on um, how much money you have in your wallet? What if somebody wants to go to an expensive restaurant and can't pay? Don't they still have a human right to eat? What about somebody who wants to, to rent an expensive apartment that they can't afford? Don't they still have a human right to shelter? Where does it stop? The reality is you need to respect private property, even if it means putting up with people making decisions that you wouldn't do. Okay. Well, Councilor Blakey. I had an opportunity last night to sit with a business owner here in the Valley who was asking some good pointed questions. And these are real, I call, I call just good gut questions. And he just wanted to see, he sat and asked me the question. He says, how does this affect my business? And why is this a big deal? Why should I even care about this? So I reversed the question. And I said, well, tell me. He goes, I don't know if someone's gay when they come into my restaurant, they come into my place to eat. I don't know that. Why would I want to deny them service? Exactly, that's the answer. Why would you want to deny them service? When would you want to deny them service? You would want to deny them service at the same time that you would deny anybody service who might be then become a, a uh, what I would call making a lot of noise, uh, breaking a law, being rude, being crude. Those are reasons why you would deny somebody service. Not just because they have a label. And so I think that's, an, and he, I think, and he understood that. He goes, I understand now. I understand. This won't affect my business. It'll never, this will never affect. Now, if someone comes in and it becomes disorderly, that'll be any one of us. Any one of us could be there. And so um, it was a good conversation to have with that gentleman. And I thought, I, I, you know, I, he changed, I'm not going to say he's changed his opinion, but he saw the opinion. Okay. Well, I'm going to reserve my comments for, I'd like to get on with the reading. I would not rather continue debating. Okay. Councilor da uh, Daniel. I'll defer to Councilor Maldonado. He had his hand Councilor up. Councilor Maldonado. Uh, well, some of the stuff you brought up, Councilor, just uh, to me, uh, you, I'm trying to grasp what, trying to remember what you said, but um, as far as the people, property rights, the uh, same argument that we had in the 1960s. Um, because you're black, I shouldn't have to serve you or what have you. Um, and as far as somebody with money in their wallet or you know, spiky hair or what have you, uh, gay people are born gay. Um, you know, that might be a fundamental difference that you and I don't agree on, 
But as far as I'm concerned, this human rights is some way, a way that you're born. You're born African American, you're born, I was born Hispanic, you were born gay, what have you. Those, that to me is human rights, not whether or not you wear a watch on your hand or you have $300 in your wallet. Councilor Daniel. Well, some people are born poor, and that's just reality. My point was, there's always a next group. If, if you believe that government has an inherent right to force you to give up your property or to provide a service to someone, then where does it stop? There, there's a lot of different reasons why you could force someone to do that. I don't agree with this ordinance. I, I don't think it's proper. I think there's better ways to deal with this issue. Councilor Blakey and then Councilor or Pro Tem. The eyes in the side of your head. I do. <laughs> okay. We've talked about the penalty several times. We've heard we've heard comments from the audience. We've heard comments from uh, council members about uh, the repercussions if 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 uh, if this ordinance is violated. If this ordinance is violated in many different ways. Uh, if you read the ordinance, uh, if we refuse service to an individual because of their national or uh, of their orient uh, where they're born, that could be a violation. Why was that left in there? I was part of that discussion, and at one point in time, we talked about eliminating that. Some of the cities in, in the state have eliminated it. Some have left it in. I was of the ar argument and the opinion that I want to leave it in there, and I want to leave it in there for a reason. And I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. I do not want Lewiston to become a point of what's called a point of interest nationally. If we have this ordinance and there's really no teeth to it, or there's a $25 fine, or there's no fine, you get your, you get your wrist slapped, I don't want somebody to come into the city of Lewiston and say, hey, you know what, your bar and grill isn't doing really well, is it? No, been a bad year, been a tough year. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna give you 100 grand today if you'll stick a sign on the front of your door that says, we do not serve fill in the blank. We don't serve your kind. And if the worst thing that can happen to that business owner is a $25 slap in the wrist or a $50 fine or something, what have we have accomplished? We've gone through that in Northern Idaho. What did Northern Idaho get out of that over the years? What did they battle with racism? What other parts of the state that have had the issue? No, that's why that was left in there. Will it ever have to be used and enacted? I hope not, because I believe what people have said, that this is a strong community that doesn't have a racist heart. Councilor Daniel. Oh, sorry. Pro Tem. Mr. Mayor, I just want to address uh, Councilor Maldonado's comments earlier, and I agree with Councilor Daniel. People are born hungry. People are born needing shelter. That doesn't mean that they have a right to come in and take food from someone's fridge or live in their house. No one has a right, an inherent right, to our property and uh, or the fruits of our labor. That's involuntary servitude. Okay, Councilor Daniel, then I'm going to speak. You know, Councilor Maldonado also mentioned, he, he was referencing the 1960s, meaning he was, he was referencing the Civil Rights Act. The difference is, back when the Civil Rights Act was enacted, government and the private sector were working in collusion to create a, a second class of citizens. You don't have that now. Even in Idaho, the LGBT community has full access to government institutions. In fact, in fact, the only institution they don't have access to currently is, is the right to marriage, and that's being worked out in the courts right now. In the private sector, I, I haven't seen a single business in the city of Lewiston, or, or actually even around in Nez Perce County, with a sign that says, straight people only. I, I don't see it. I think we have a much, uh, much better community than what Councilor Maldonado would have us believe. Okay. I'm just, I guess I'm going to go out on a limb here. You know, we're talking about where pe how people are born, things like that. And you're talking about poor people, people are born poor. They're not entitled to your free. I don't, I don't make the connection there. I'm sorry, counselors. That's, that's just me. I think it's a real stretch on the argument. I will say this. Over the last, well, week, pretty much the last week, about everybody I've talked to has asked me, what is the big deal? Just do it and move on to something that's important. I mean, you know, I don't, I guess I just don't, to me, I, I don't get it. I get it from my wife, my kids. I was uh, fortunate enough to meet a young couple. The, you're going to indulge me in a little story, but we were on the Salmon River this last week in Labor Day. 
and one of the last big beaches, there's a jet boat sitting there, there's three people on it. Well, one of them happens to be a retired school teacher from here in town, and uh, it was her son and daughter-in-law. And uh, so we pulled in, well, my buddies pulled in, and uh, asked if we could, you know, stay there, or if they were gonna stay, or if they were gonna leave. Anyways, we ended up hooking up with them, and it turned out that uh, they're both a couple young professionals. She's in a residency for a, a, a for pediatric dentistry. He's already a dentist. They're working in Portland. They're actually wanting to move back here to town. They have an opportunity to go to Boise. So the conversation around the little fire pan, bonfire, kind of went around uh, economic development in town, you know, asking about the school. I said, well, we don't really have anything to do with school. That's the school's deal, but, uh, and then he asked me about it, the human rights ordinance, and he was just curious because, you know, in Portland, they don't care. They've got it. State of Washington has it. I mean, and, and they're looking at it like, why is this a big deal? And, you know, we talked about it. I don't think it's a big deal, personally. I mean, that's, that's just me. I, I think people are, are getting worked up about a unknown boogeyman that may come and get them, and I just don't see that happening. You know, we have a mediation system set up. I understand what the letter of the law says in the ordinance. I actually had a, a, uh, a lady call me up today at work. I had to put her off, and I did call her before I came to the meeting tonight. And she asked if I actually read this. Did I read all seven pages? Ma'am, I read everything, everything that I vote on, all seven pages. I didn't have a problem with it. And there are no special rights being created. That was the first thing out of her mouth. They were given special rights to people. Well, we're not. We're guaranteeing the same rights. So, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to continue on the discussion and open it up to the rest of you. Again, Councilor Dan. You know, Mr. Mayor, you use the term rights. When you give access to somebody over somebody else's property, that's not a right. That's, that you're giving a privilege. So at least use the right terminology. You're giving somebody privilege over somebody else's property. It don't. It, it's kind of an insult to our founders to to and call that a right. Well, sir, I guess um, I'm not sure how you mean that I'm, by doing this, I'm, I'm approving taking, some, or taking away somebody's right and giving somebody a right to somebody else's property. I still don't make that connection. So an example would be? An example would be if somebody didn't want to sell somebody else their used car for whatever reason, or we'll say for their sexual orientation, you're saying, they have to. At that point, you're telling them they have to dispose of their property. I, I don't make that connection, Mr. Mayor. Sir. Mr. Mayor. Uh, hang on. Okay. Okay. Can... Councilor Maldonado. That's, that's not actually what we're saying. We're not saying you have to. We're just saying you can't not do it because they are gay. It's, so it's, that's exactly it's, what you're doing. No, you're not saying, hey, there's a gay person coming in. I have to sell them my car. You're just making them equal as there's a redhead coming in, there's a brunette coming in. They all have the same opportunity to buy this car. I can't discriminate against them because they are gay. That is what this is saying. The only right that this is taking away is a person's right to discriminate against somebody because they are gay. It's not giving a right to anybody and it's not taking a right Please. Please. Thank you. That's exactly what I just described. When in the free market, you enter into voluntary contracts. Somebody comes into your business one at a time. Each time somebody comes up to the register, you're entering into a voluntary contract with that person. I agree, I agree to pay you $10 in exchange. You, get, you agree to give me that $10 item. That's what I'm talking about. Councilor Blakey. I don't want to deflect the subject here, but I do want to keep in mind that this ordinance also talks about familiar status. We haven't talked about it, and maybe that's good, no one's brought it up, but that's also part of the ordinance that uh, in some ways may even be as important or more important. And it's a form of discrimination that probably takes place more in the Valley than we know. And I'm proud that that's also in this document. Which goes back to what Mrs. Evers was saying earlier, and I'd agree. Further discussion?
we do have two more readings of this. So, motion has been made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor of reading ordinance 4614 for the first time say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion carries five to two. Approving the first reading of ordinance 4612 by title only. An ordinance of the city of Lewiston enacting a new section to the Lewiston city code to be codified as chapters 38, chapter 38, sections one through seven. Prohibiting, prohibiting discrimination in housing, employment, and public accommodations based upon familial status, sexual orientation, and or gender identity expression and providing an effective date. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Item C on the active agenda, vouchers payable. Albertsons, uh, August 15th of 2014 to August 28th of 2014 in the amount of 331.85. I'll approve a motion to pay vouchers payable to Albertsons. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries six to zero with Councilor Daniel abstaining. Okay, on to unfinished and new business. City Councilor comments. Do we have any comments this evening? Mr. Mayor. Council Maldonado. Just for those of you who are still here and might hear on your way out, thank you so much for coming. Uh, whether or not you are for or against us, it's nice to have people who care and come to our meetings. Um, usually we get like four people here, so it's nice to see more than four. Um, I also would really like to thank Councilor Randall and Councilor Blakey for all the work that they put in uh, as we sat on a subcommittee and drafted this ordinance. I know it's not over, but uh, just getting to this stage was some work, and I appreciate Councilor Randall and Councilor Blakey's hard work in getting us to this point. Thank you. Other, Councilor Blakey? Um, I'm not sure who this question is directed at, but uh, recently, or this, this past week, I got a phone call from a citizen referring to Lewiston as the, or he said that an out of town folk said, well, things haven't changed in Lewiston. It's still the weed capital of the United States. And I thought he meant Seattle when he said that. Uh, but I understood he was talking about different kinds of weeds. And so what we, what he was, I thought, you know, proximity to Clarkston, you know, something I don't know about going on. Wait, anyway, he was referring to our, our, our weeds that are down on the highway along um, Southway especially down around the roundabout and out towards the, the, the sign out there that announces what's going on in the community. And I, and I said I would ask that question about who does maintain the Snake River Avenue out around the roundup and the weeds that have grown up around the brand new roundup. Whose responsibility would that be? I, well, any property that is located within the city limits of Lewiston is a responsibility of the city. Anything outside would be the responsibility of the county. Uh, both have uh, employees uh, who periodically go out and um, either cut or in some cases burn weeds in order to uh, get them down to manageable levels. Uh, and as far as the city's concerned, uh, that could be either the Public Works, Parks Recreation Department, or the Fire Department, depending on the, on the nature of the, of the weeds and uh, the fire. Um, the degree of susceptibility to fire. Okay. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm probably micromanaging here, but the roundabout is getting a little rustic looking, and um, probably we do need to go address the weeds that are growing around the edges of it. We'll take care of that. <laughs> Mr. Marsh. Mr. Mayor, yes, and, uh, and I haven't had a chance to visit with Mr. Bennett, but uh, as acting uh, manager last week, I filled in the same comment. And I have met with both public works and parks and also give them Mr. Gregor's name from our fire department. Oh. And uh, it does look bad, it looks terrible. I drove down there yesterday. And uh, so I'm asked, we've also asked, because the property ownership intertwines along uh, Snake River Avenue, there's county property, there's core property. And so uh, that'll be shared with Mr. Bennett. Uh, this okay. Other council comments? Um, we, we do have a URA meeting tomorrow at 12 o'clock um, in the back of the city hall. I encourage all citizens who have nothing going on at lunch hour to please attend the meeting. Thank you, Councillor. Um, 
I too want to thank everybody for showing up tonight. Um, this is a tough issue. We got a couple more readings. We'll sort through it. Um, you know, the, the, uh, we've had some contentious meetings over the last four or five weeks, budget sessions, of course, the human rights ordinance, the uh, cell phone contract that we've been meeting on for seven months. Um, one thing that keeps getting lost, and I'm going to bring it up, and I see staff has already disappeared on us, but uh, there are people that did not get to see this meeting tonight. And to me, in this century, this year, 2014, it is unconscionable that we still have not figured out a way of live streaming our meetings, whether it's through our website or whatever. But as Cable One is losing viewership because their rate's going up, I'm one of them. I'm on, on DirecTV now. My wife can't watch me unless she goes over to the neighbor's house. And he's getting ready to bail, too. So we need to get this addressed. And I, I, I don't know, I know I'm not dumping on you, Mr. Bennett, but we've been talking about it, and somebody needs to start making some progress. Well, I can tell you we've made quite a bit of progress as far as uh, our facility at City Hall. We will be prepared to begin live streaming of City Council work sessions uh, beginning with our next work session next Monday. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing. Yes. I really appreciate that. And we'll have some sort of public service announcement in the paper or a paid advertisement. I don't care what it is, but to let everybody know that they will now be able to see that. We will do that. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Mayor? We're, Councilor Blakey. We're giving out 10,000 free computers so that people can watch these. They're all getting iPads. <laughs> That yeah, that's next year's budget. <laughs> we'll be discussing that in February. Yeah. One thing at a time. Okay. Uh, any other council comments? Mr. Bennett, do you have anything for us tonight? I do. Uh, just a few things. Uh, one is to note that the 13th anniversary of 911 uh, of 911 uh, is coming up, and it will we will have our annual ceremony this week. Um, at Pioneer Park beginning at 6.45 p.m. So certainly would encourage folks uh, to come and uh, pay tribute to the emergency responders and citizens who perished at the World Trade Center in uh, uh, September 11, 2001. Uh, secondly, um, uh, a note that um, there's been some, some questions regarding the water and sewer fees that were adopted at the last budget by the City Council and that uh, a rumor, if you have it, that there will be a 3% uh, franchise fee tagged on to the water and sewer fees that the city would be able to use. That's not correct. Uh, there is no additional fee uh, associated with this year's water and sewer fees, uh, just the 5% increase to water and the 3% increase to sewer that was approved by the city council at the budget. That could be related to the we were considering the franchise fees with Avista and right. At one point, there was some discussion about going to the voters uh, to approve a three percent uh, utility franchise fee with Avista uh, as one way to raise additional revenue to fund streets. Uh, that was several months ago, so that's probably the source of that. Okay, thank you. Sir. And lastly, there was a letter to the editor. Uh, in the newspaper a few days back regarding the recently completed sewer project at Community Park. And I have to say it's full of inaccuracies and so I'd like to address those. Um, the project was about a five month project. That's about the only thing that was correct with the article. Um, it was a Davis-Bacon job. Uh, however, the wages were considerably less than the 30 to $40 an hour that were quoted in the paper. Every employee was paid less than that. Every person connected with the job. Um, it was a federal job, federal funding applied, so Davis-Bacon did apply. Um, it was not a cost plus job, meaning that the contractor got to add a percentage onto the cost of the project. It was a uh, unit bid price job. Uh, the job was put out for bid, and it was advertised in December, and bids were opened in January. There were 13 bidders on the project, and the Low bid was the one that was awarded the project, uh, and it came in about $137,000 under the engineer's estimate, which was a good deal for the city. 
There were no problems associated with the job. Our engineering staff monitored it on a regular basis. Uh, it was a very successful project for the city. Uh, no one associated with the city staff uh, worked with, cut a deal with, or had any contact with the contractor who was awarded the bid. That is not correct. And last but not least, it was not a 4,000 foot long ditch. It was a 6,800 foot, eight inch sanitary sewer with 28 manholes, a 1,500 foot access road for maintenance, and there were 540 cubic yards of rock removed. So, you know, this was a standard public works project. It was done very successfully. It came in under budget, and I wanted to set the record straight. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, next up, advisory board and commission appointments. Do we have any this evening? Mr. Mayor. Councilor Collins. Uh, the Historical Preservation Committee has uh, two openings that we would like to put out there for individuals that might be interested. Uh, at the same time, we have two individuals that I would like to nominate this evening to fill positions that are currently open. We had a, a lot of people that their term expired just this month, so um, they have reapplied. Um, separately, uh, Tara LaGreasley, I'd like to move that she be reappointed to the Historic Preservation Commission. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second to reappoint Tara LaGreasley. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries 7-0. And then the second is uh, Bill Miller. Would move that he would be appointed. Second. Bill Miller. Okay, we have a motion and a second to reappoint Bill Miller to the Historical Preservation Committee. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries 7-0 also. Fine, Thank Mr. You. Mayor, if I, if I may. Yes. Uh, with that same commission, at the end of this month, September 27th, uh, we have the annual Orchid Awards are being presented. That is set Saturday, September 27th. There will be a number of tours and other things associated with the commission and preservation of the Lewiston's uh, history. Okay, and what time is that again? Uh, it is throughout the morning, and I'm not sure if I have the exact times. There will be some advertisements in the paper and on the Down Saturday at page. the Capitol. Yes, yes. And okay. Gary Bush will be taking tours and uh, showing not only these winners, but past winners, I believe. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Maldonado. We have four openings on the Youth Advisory Commission, Ooh. which means we do not have a quorum, so we would urge people to apply as soon as possible. Um, it's open for kids from the ages, well, grade eighth grade to senior year. Four openings. Okay. So. Hey, Carrie, would there be a way of us putting a notice in the paper on that, too? Absolutely. Thank, thank you. You know, kind of recruiting for the youth, the school. youth yeah, advisory. I was going to say, could we put something in the school bulletin at the high school? I believe we could probably make something happen there. Mr. Mayor. Okay. Brandon Johnson. Page. <laughs> Unfortunately, we are not allowed to promote that at the high school. Oh, we're not? Okay. Well, then we'll do our best to get the word out in public. Councilor Randall. We have two openings on the uh, solid waste Still. advisory board. And our, ne our meeting this month was canceled, so the next first meeting will be in October. Okay. And I believe, do we still have one opening on the TAC? Yes. The one that Garrett Fry advocated. Okay. Uh, Mayor, so. it's brought to my attention that there is an additional position on the Historic Preservation Commission that is up for uh, consideration of reappointment that would be Jackie Haight. So I would ask the council's indulgence to consider uh, reappointment of her position as well. Okay, and she has applied. I don't Mr. Know that Mayor, I actually, that. I moved and we passed that at the last meeting, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Was that done? Yes, that was done last meeting. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Okay. Thank you. So, if anybody wants to get involved in our local government, we have several openings available and. Uh, all the meetings are always fun and exciting and full of information. So, uh, work session agenda topics, any we, new ones? We won't have one additional item on the September 15th uh, work session agenda, um, which will be uh, a discussion concerning the uh, charging of water and sewer equity buy-in fees. And okay. this relates well, that's specific, in, this That's relates, on our agenda now. It, was added today okay yeah so 
Uh, that will be to specifically discuss the property uh, in the area of the airport economic development area. Okay. In addition, we, the main focus of that work session is going to be on community park, of course. There will also be a discussion on the recent uh, uh, Second Amendment uh, uh, group's uh, request to uh, make sure that local ordinances are compliant with state law. And uh, I'm trying to think of what the last item is. Oh, it'll come to me. Uh, but it's already on the agenda. Yeah, no, I yeah. left mine in my It's already on the agenda. Vehicle. OK, anything else? All right, well, thank you, everybody. We'll adjourn this meeting.